high in the halls of the kings who are gone. Eight days after Eddard and the others left Winterfell, Catelyn is still sitting at Bran's bedside in her fragile mental state. Maester Lewin comes to tell her how much the King's visit has cost them, but Catelyn is not interested in looking at figures. Regardless, the Maester continues to speak of replacing provisions. Catelyn insists that the steward can worry about such matters. Lewin reminds her that Veon Poole went south with Lord Eddard and needs to be replaced, along with a number of other positions. Catelyn is outraged that he can think of such trivial things when Bran is dying until Rob arrives to take charge of the appointment. After the maester leaves, Rob asks Catelyn what she thinks she is doing spending all her time with Bran and not even saying farewell to her own family. Catelyn insists that she can't bear to be away from Bran in case he should die. Rob assures her that Bran is not going to die and reminds her that other children need her too. He goes on to explain that Rickon just follows him around all day crying, thinking everyone has abandoned him. Rob hears a direwolf howling outside and opens the window, explaining that the sound seems to be good for Bran. When the other direwolves join in, Catelyn screams for Rob to make the noise stop and then collapses to the floor. Rob helps her up, but she only begins screaming again. Then Rob notices the dogs barking as well and sees the library tower afire. While Rob rushes off to fight the fire, Catelyn remains behind with Bran. When she turns away from the window, however, she is face to face with a filthy man brandishing a knife. The man claims that Catelyn was not supposed to be there and moves towards Bran, claiming that killing him would be a mercy. Catelyn attempts to scream for help, but the man is too quick as he moves to slit her throat. Catelyn manages to grab the blade with her hands and push it away, cutting her fingers badly. She bites the man's hand and fights her way three. The man is about to attack her again when Bran's direwolf leaps on to him and rips out his throat. Once the man is dead, the direwolf settles down on Bran's bed. Catelyn is taken back to her chambers. Old Nan undresses her and helps her into a bath. After the bath, Maester Lewin dresses Catelyn's wounds. Her fingers are cut almost to the bone and the man had pulled out a handful of hair. The Maester gives her milk of the poppy which puts her to sleep. She wakes up four days later. It seems like a nightmare but the pain in her hands reminds her that it was real. While Catelyn remembers her behaviour since Bran's fall, she is ashamed, promising herself that it will not happen again. Rob, now wearing armour and a sword, comes to see her with Theon Greyjoy, Sir Roderick Cassell and Halys Mollen, the new Captain of the Guard. Hal tells her that nobody knows who the man was, but he had been likely lurking in the stables since the King's visit. Where the man had been hiding, they found 90 silver stags hidden under the straw. When Rob asks why anybody would want to kill Bran, Catelyn insists that as a lord, he must learn to answer his own questions. Rob guesses that somebody is afraid of what Bran might do or say if he wakes up, and so posts a heavy guard on Bran. Roderick points out that the dagger used by the assassin, a Valyrian steel blade with a dragon bone handle, is a much finer weapon than anything the low-born footpad should have possessed. Someone must have given it to him. Catelyn then tells Roderick, Theon and Rob, in strict confidence of her sister Liza's suspicion about the death of John Arryn. She reminds them that Jaime Lannister did not go hunting with the others the day Bran fell, and she does not believe that Bran fell, but that he was pushed. The group admits that this is a reasonable conclusion. However, Maester Lewin points out that all they have is conjecture, and that they must have proof or else keep silent. After some deliberation, Catelyn decides that she and Roderick will go to King's Landing by ship to inform Eddard, hopefully arriving ahead of the King's party. I demand a trial by combat. 